you've been doing a lot of rallying though this year. You've had a lot of success this year in rallying. How have you found your debut though in the World Rally Championship? Yeah, I found it very exciting and uh, very interesting, uh, very tough. It's um, obviously, you know, I'm comfortable with the roads here in Japan. A lot of the other guys, you know, find them very twisty and, and very narrow, but you know, that's what I've done all season here. So for me, the roads are not that, um, that difficult uh, and that's something that I need to get used to but uh, the event is bigger the stages are longer um, so th that's the that's the thing and um, you know there's a lot of um, you know, lo long week you're recce and everything so it's uh, it's very interesting experience but I really like it yeah in terms of your pace though against some of the best drivers in the world here in rally two cars is it where you thought it would be I didn't really know where it was gonna be and I mean, it is what it is. I don't know if it's if it's good or not. It's hard to hard to say. Of course, you always want more, but on the other hand, rallying is a very difficult sport, and and these guys are good, like you said. So I'm not that uh, fast about it. You know, some stages I've been faster, some stages slower. Um, just try to enjoy it and not to be too hard on myself, because I mean, this is a difficult sport. What about your ambitions now in rallying, Heike? We hear you're moving back to Europe, back to Finland. Might we see a little more of you, perhaps, in the championship? Obviously the roads here in Japan are very different and the, the roads in Europe are um, something that I'm not very familiar with. And we had one rally here in Japan in Hokkaido, the high speed gravel rally, and I mean that was a struggle for me. So if I went back to Europe on that kind of, or back to Finland for example, for that kind of high speed gravel roads, I think it would be a, quite a big shock at the beginning. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm really motivated to do more rallying. I, I know I'm getting older, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be a, a, a Kalle Rovanpera or a, a world <laughs> champion in rallying, I know that. But uh, if we can find um, a good package, a good uh, group of people, partners, uh, perhaps we could try to do some more. You know, I'm, I still feel like uh, I'm fit and well, so it's worth pursuing the opportunities here, even if it doesn't lead to a championship in the future. Tell me a little bit about how rallying is perceived within the Formula One community. You know, do they look at rally drivers like Young Cali, like OJ, and think they're completely mad? Or is there, is there a, a huge amount of respect for rally drivers? How are they seen? Probably a bit of both. I think they think <laughs> that they are a bit, bit, a bit of a nutcases, but they are, uh, there's a lot of respect. I think the Formula One drivers know how difficult it is. Uh, perhaps sometimes uh, uh, a fan or, uh, or someone who is following rallying doesn't really appreciate how difficult it is. It, it is really difficult sport. It's not difficult to drive a car if you know where to go and if you know the road. I mean, for all the professional drivers, whether it's a racing driver or a rally driver, you know, you can drive a car to a certain uh, certain limit and to a certain extent uh, sort of quite easily. Of course, the last bit is always difficult, but in rallying, the challenge comes when the road becomes unknown and you make pace notes and just check the stage a couple of times and then you gotta go. That's the, really the key and and I, I feel people don't appreciate that difficulty sometimes enough. Gino, WRC Invest. run by enthusiasts like Alessandro Gino and Andrea Adamo. You know, you've obviously met and known many Formula One champions and World Rally champions. In your opinion, what do you think is the single most important attribute you need to be a Formula One champion, and then the single most important attribute you need to be a World Rally champion? Is it the same thing or are they different? So I think in both you need um, like uh, a lot of confidence in your own ability, and like natural confidence in your own ability. And I've, you know, I've been a teammate to drivers like Hamilton, and you know, he even if he has bad days, you can just see that he just gets fuel from that. And I think that the great champions, you know, they all have that. They when they get knocked down, they just gonna come back stronger, twice as hard. And I mean, I think in rallying. Um, and to me, I guess in some extent in Formula One as well, you know, what you see and what you hear are very important. Uh, perhaps more important in rallying, you got to really read the road and you got to, you know, check, you know, quite far ahead and, okay, there's a bit of mud there, I got to back off a bit, but now the tarmac looks green, uh, clean, so now I just got to act, you know, go harder. In Formula One, usually the conditions are a bit more stable, but uh, obviously you need good eyes and good hearing there as well. I remember myself, um, I used to, you know, hear the engine where the where the engine range was. You know, it was quite important. Sometimes you got a short shift because you feel like you know you run out of grip, and sometimes you can go all the way to the top. And uh, but, you know, you need them 
those skills both in, in both Formula One and rallying. But I think that the eyes are like particularly important in rallying. That's really interesting, really interesting. Hey, I have to say it's been a delight talking to you. I'm really looking forward to talking to you more often next year. Fingers crossed you pull things together and it's great to see you out enjoying this event. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, yeah.